and I will start with an announcement. Um, Alan sent email to Patrick and to me last night saying that he was not going to be able to meet, this, meet with us today and that he would be resigning from the board at the end of the month for family reasons. So, um, what I would like you to have sort of in the back of your mind is if you can think of anyone we might like to consider replacing him through the remainder of his term, which will expire this spring. And um, I don't think we are obligated to fill the position, especially since it's really less than six months. But on the other hand, if there were someone anyone thought would be a good candidate, then it would certainly be nice to bring the person on board sooner rather than later. And if things went well, one might hope that they would um, maybe stand for election without much competition or, anyway, if there is a good and qualified candidate, I would certainly like the board to consider it. If not, I think we will go along our merry way and um, hope that we think of someone or someone crawls out of the woodwork. I have a couple of ideas, mm -hmm. but what I would like to do is maybe come back to this at the very end of the meeting. If yeah. mm -hmm. you Give us some. Yeah. Well, nomination papers. You can take start those. We don't need that if we are going to fill the position oh, okay. in a temporary way. Mm -hmm. We just need to make a recommendation to the um, selectmen who would need to vote in favor of the replacement. Yeah. Who, who else is up for the election? It's you? Are you running again? It was Alan. I'm just trying to get an overall Assess. picture yeah, of no. what we might Can, face. Let's deal with this at the end. Okay. And we'll do a lot for that. Okay. Thank you. That gives you time to think. Give you time to think. <laughs> no pressure. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay. First item on the agenda. Vote on the minutes of November 8th. And I, make, I, make, I make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Second. Well, I also got to things, but I don't know if I can because I took the minutes. Yes, you can. Okay. Great. Are there any corrections or edits or changes? All in favor, please say so. Yeah. And do we have one extension for yes. the absent person? Yep. I think that makes perfect sense. Um, we do not have any public to comment today. Um, but I will take this opportunity to ask you to briefly summarize the Kathleen Arena correspondence. Sure. Um, I feel like I talked about this before, but maybe I didn't. No. Maybe I just told Alan. Um, so this was the the woman who wanted us to have a like a demonstration drought garden, the one who sent the letter to Patrick saying, you know, can you please put in some drought plants and you know consider you know, educating the public about them. And we had discussed that at the last meeting and we had agreed that it sounded like a good opportunity for the entire public, not just for us. So I wrote to her, thanked her for her interest and invited her to come give a talk. Here to the public, I said, you know, I think this would be of broader interest than, you know, just for the library trustees and the library. Um, you know, usually talks are, you know, our best slots are Saturday morning. Um, we also have Wednesday evenings. Uh, those would be your best opportunity to draw a big crowd. Um, and if you, because she's waiting to hear something back from the Arbor Foundation, I said if you have stuff from the Arbor Foundation, you know, materials, you could bring that. We could, you know, set it up, whatever. So she wrote back, I'm, I'm too busy right now. Um, 
I really just want you to basically like create a you know create a demonstration garden. It was about the library, and you know, would you consider making a demonstration garden of drought resistant plants, um, etc. And um, so I, I wrote back, well, when your schedule frees up, we'd love to have you here, um, you know, to give you the opportunity. And we did actually have a master plan for the, for the library, which included a sustainability subcommittee, and we did put in all native plants that, you know, did not require supplemental watering. Um, so, and we haven't watered even throughout the drought, but like we, you know, when nothing died except grass, and I, I did say, that's not drought resistant here as grass um, at this point. So, uh, you know, looking forward to hearing more from you when you become more available. And, you know, if you do get this information from the Arbor Day Foundation or have any other materials, you know, please let us know and we're happy to work with you to sort of set up a, you know, an exhibit. And that was it. That was the last I heard. Could you so, tell me her name again? Kathleen I'll look it up. I'll shoot it to you, Thank Jess. You. I'll find it. I know I saved the correspondence somewhere. I'm having some technical issues here, but yeah, I'm not in. I'm not in the way. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it to you. Are you not able to connect? I tried, but I I learned a while ago just to download all the documents that I need yeah. before I come in. Mm -hmm. So, and it's usually quicker anyway. Um, it usually comes in at some point, mm -hmm. just because I tend to show up. See now, mine. I'm seeing my pants. <laughs> I get in, but then I, it, I get it sent me out. It takes yeah. me out. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. Okay. Moving on to the director's report, Patrick. Okay. So um, this was a fairly eventful and busy month. Um, we are due to turn in our departmental budget on Friday, which is considerably earlier than it has been in the past. It's usually been um, towards the end of the month. So I, I was somewhat rushed to put this together. Has everybody looked at what I put forward? It's fairly self-explanatory, although you will see that um, the percentage change is slightly higher than it has been in uh, recent years. Um, there was a memo that I sent around that was from the town administrator and essentially her, um, her instruction to department heads was, uh, she said last year I recommended that we ask department heads to prepare budgets reflecting what their department's needs were to successfully and efficiently provide services to the residents of Hadley. Uh, department has presented trustworthy budgets and I would like to recommend that the select board allow me to take that same approach for FY24. And so I took that at face value and have based on what I see as our needs, which include um, more available staff hours, um, have put that into the part-time library salaries line. So that has gone up by um, from 97,000 and change to 107,000, um, and that $10,000 by and large will go towards expanding the hours for the assistant director to be here full days on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, because she at this point comes in in the morning and then leaves around 3.30 which leaves a gap at the end where if there's another absence then you know I, I'm happy to do it but you know there may not be another staff person here other than myself um, so that would help uh, a little bit <clears throat> um, are we looking at this FY staffing? This is the one we're looking at. Yes. FY staffing, not the overall Yes, budget. but okay. you also get a spreadsheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, that one? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. One. So, so there, this is the staffing explanation is just specific to, you know, to how much each individual staff person gets paid. There are, I don't think there are any other changes here. Well, I, I have a so, question, though. Yeah, there is one other change. Okay. Go Sorry, there is one other change, which is that, and this hasn't happened yet, but I had to budget for it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have an official resignation from her, but Audris is, um, is planning to step down from that position. She may stay on as a Saturday person, she, so she may still still remain on the staff and, um, and, and be in our sub roster, but she will not be the YA person probably as of late January. So again, she has not put something on my desk, but she's been telegraphing that this is happening, which is very helpful because I needed to yeah. have that in the mix as I put this together. So. 
Um, so that that may be coming. So that also that's an additional um, five hours that we wouldn't have been paying because that was part of her schedule, mm -hmm. and we intend to fill the YA position as you know the same number of hours, 27 hours with benefits, mm -hmm. uh, which will help us to attract a wider pool of candidates than we've been able to in the past when it was only 15 or 16 hours with benefits. So. Um, so that's a, that's a good thing, even though we're sad to uh, not have her in that position. Um, Did she say why she is thinking of leaving? Because I know uh, she came to you and said she needed more hours, and that's why we, you know, out of our own budget, funded that, and yeah. then went, you know, yeah. asked for the additional. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think anyone would have asked and made that same request. I think in the end, she decided that, um, that YA librarianship was not where her future hmm. Is um, she's still interested in library work, but she um, is not necessarily loving the programming aspect of it, and um, and I don't think this is the reason. We talked about it. We had our you know annual check-in conversation, and um, and so so this was also part of the conversation because I knew that she was you know likely to leave. But we talked about um, a number of things, and you know there have been a lot of challenges with Hawaii room. There have been um, some. Call them, um, you know, behavioral issues, and um, so there's been a lot more maybe stress involved. I personally, I don't want to minimize it, but I don't, I don't think that we're, you know, you know, I don't think we're things are running out of control. But I can see why it could lead to someone feeling a little bit burned out um, and just make them question, like, is this really what I want to be doing? I think it's a great experience. I think she really inhabited the role of the, you know, the. Um, Youth Services Coordinator, um, but she just has decided that her destiny lies elsewhere. So I get that. So yeah, so whenever she makes that official, uh, we'll be putting that out to uh, to attract new candidates, and hopefully there won't be like a huge gap. But, but thankfully we have that sub budget that's been approved to to use Lake Meg funding for, and that will help us to get through that patch of however many weeks we you know we're down a person. So. I'm glad that we have that in place to, to help us out. And we were, we were also starting to have some of the subs come in and uh, get oriented so that when we do have to ask them to literally substitute, mm -hmm. that they'll know what's what and the paperwork will have all been taken care of. And, uh, How many subs do you have? At this point, we have three on the roster, and with Audrey's, we'd have four. Oh, nice. So it's, 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 yeah, it's very good. And are you allowed to post for the position or not until this one is officially vacant? Like, can you minimize that gap by posting now? We could, I I, but I, I, again, until someone puts a piece of paper in front of me, I don't want Got to it. do something, I don't want them to feel that they can't undo something that they've said. Yeah. I think it was quite um, admirable to come and just be, be very transparent mm -hmm. about it so that it wasn't, uh, you know, that we weren't blindsided by it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, two weeks, you know, goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciated that, and I just would like for her to actually sign her name to it and say, "This is what I'm doing," and then it's official, and then we can send it out, you know, the next day if we need to. Um, so otherwise, the, the budget is fairly. Um, there's really nothing to see here. We're still sort of um, kind of bumping along with minimum um, amounts for other lines because we have sort of transferred that emphasis to um, personnel and, and are using, you know, we have as other resources like we think to carry us through when we need supplies or, uh, you know, unexpected computer maintenance or, or what have you. Um, one thing I will mention about this, uh, it's in the, down in the report here, but we are moving over to a contract with CW Mars for IT support, the fellow that we've been working with for a long time, who was a staff person at the Jones um, and came out, you know, pretty reliably. All of a sudden, we found out that he had moved to Mashpee and was still available oh. to do remote IT wow. you know, stuff. But um, but the reality is that he has not been as available as he had been before, and that's kind of left us in the lurch. So I, uh, we were having some issues with the security software and Windows kind of clashing with each other and having a lot of. Um, computer issues and, and patron complaints coming in. Why, well, you know, I can't print, mm -hmm. I can't. Mm -hmm. the computer's frozen. So um, so we we're just gonna go with CW Mars because it's, it's their network, they know how all this works. Um, 
and I think the cost will be reasonable. So it's the cost that's here, thirteen twenty-five, reflects the annual cost for that uh, for that expense. Um, Can I go back to this budget? Yeah. I had two questions sure. on the budget. Yep. One was the I wanted to ask a question about the email from Carolyn. Her last line said, I will present a suggested COLA increase to the select board after the finance team has the opportunity to review the second quarter revenues of FY23. Is she suggesting that after the second quarter of FY23 there would be, is this an additional COLA? Or is she saying, I'll come up with my COLA figure for FY24 once I've seen all of this other stuff? Yeah, so, so in the past the way it's worked is they, um, and I don't know if this is better or worse, but in the past they have asked us, they've given us direction, you know, I guess coming from the finance committee and select board, they've said, please formulate your budgets um, as though they were level service or incorporate, uh, you know, 2% COLA or whatever it was going to be okay. into your figures, mm -hmm. which was fine, but it, yeah. it, it kind of makes sense to just sort of like put this forward and, let her and then they make, the, they make the yeah. choice to adjust it or not adjust it. Okay. We don't really get much say in it either way. Okay. So I was just I just wondered if it was like a mid year no. like yeah. due to inflation, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's okay. no they're not telegraphing anything to okay. us about like are we gonna do step increases, which they have not done step increases in, yep. in like literally years. Yeah. And I did actually, you know, say something to Carolyn about that in an email. Yeah. Because she wanted to come and sit in on a staff meeting and get to know the staff. And I said that is you know, that's really nice, you'd be welcome to do that. Um, but I kind of pointed back to this and said, you know, what we, people really want is sort of action on, because I was talking about how we were doing our, our annual, you know, reviews and check-ins, mm -hmm. um, but that these are not tied to compensation, et cetera, and reminding her that, you know, mm -hmm. there really hasn't been a step increase for people, because that's something that people, when I sit down with them, they're talking yeah. to me about, like, you know, what's the town doing? And I have to say, I don't know what the town is doing, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I feel that I am obligated to um, advocate for them to do something about it because yes. they're telling me that they would like to raise. I agree. Which is very understandable. Was was there a COLA last year? There was, but I don't remember what it was. It was probably it was probably one or two percent. Mm -hmm. Which maybe was that I mean that's fairly normal for for at least in the time that I've been here, but when inflation is 7%. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's why I wondered, because I remembered the 2% as well, and then when I read that, I was like, oh, well, maybe they're doing an additional. Because so, I just looked up the COLA for the Social Security Administration, oh, and it's like 8.9% yeah, or something uh, no. for the coming year, and yeah. which well, makes sense. Jumped. Yeah. 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 Which makes sense, right, this year. Yeah. So, it's um, so, it's, so it gets just, eaten up by the Medicare costs. It's not all just sure, but right. with with inflation where it's at, a two percent raise is a right. cut. <laughs> well, well, it, which is right. why I read that yeah. note the way I did. Yeah, yeah. But then when you didn't mention it and I didn't see it in this budget line, that's when I wondered: it was I just doing magical thinking? Apparently, I was doing magical thinking. But that's okay. Yeah, no, yeah. to. The, the other thing I'm wondering about in terms of staff salaries, um, since yeah. the, the minimum wage has gone up each year, is that some of the staff are, are now like actually pretty close to the minimum wage. Yeah. Um, and, and that's another place where um, wage increases are more than warranted. So yeah, just to, I mean just to, to echo what you've already said. Right. And and this doesn't this doesn't play into it because it, it's this isn't I don't think any action will be taken on this um, in time for this budget year, but uh, but again in, in having the conversation specifically with uh, with Sue when we had our check-in, you know, we were kind of talking about her, her situation. She was saying that she would like more hours, so I said, I, you know, I'll look into that, you know, relative to those days that, that she leaves early. And um, and we were just sort of talking about the history of her position because she's been here longer than, than any of us. Mm -hmm. um, and when she, she started, she was, her t job title was library assistant. Mm -hmm. um, and then a couple of years ago, when she went from part-time to, you know, benefited three-quarter time, which we also changed the, the job title to assistant director. She was, you know, had more responsibilities and was, you know, just doing a lot more stuff. Um, but what didn't happen along the increase, it, her salary, her hourly amount stayed the same. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it felt at the time like that might be a bridge too far to like ask them to at the same time 
reclassify the position. But I, in the meantime, a couple of years have gone by, and based on our conversation, which was you know totally positive and, and you know good, um, but one of the, one of the takeaways from that was that that really should be revisited. And so I sent an email to HR to say, here's the history of this position. I really would like to see if we can have it reclassified out of where it was because it's basically, you know, a, it's not a totally different job, but it's a job with a great deal more responsibility than, than it was, um, you know, 10 years ago when, when she was under the, the different title. Mm -hmm. So so we'll see how that goes, but I don't think anything will happen with that until, until next budget year. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. So, um do, have you run the heiress salary numbers for the same um, title? I can. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to look at yeah, that. Yeah, and we probably should do that. It's hard okay. to know though with the heiress numbers. Um, exactly yeah, because you don't know like, if you're dealing with somebody that's been there for ten years or if you're dealing. With we somebody don't, that's but at least it might give us more information. Sure. Yeah, and we can we can break that Baseline. down by by you know the size of the yep, community. Exactly. Well, I, I did that for our hours when you were saying that you wanted to you know, have a retreat and talk about all things. I had pulled all the heiress numbers to look at all, our, all the hours, and I've done the comps. I am our, you know, our comp towns, et cetera. So I'm happy to do that. I will do that um, you know, for yeah, hours. We should, we should look at that. That would be a good thing to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, what is heiress? It's the statistical report that we uh, complete for the Board of Library Commissioners every year. Okay, is it A R I S? Yes, okay. and I unfortunately I don't know what the acronym is, but that's not that information system. It's available on the FDLC website. Yeah. Yeah. But to your point, Jess, like if you look at the rates, let's pretend all of these positions were vacant. Yes. See so how it says TBD under you services coordinator. What if they all said TBD? So we're now removing the individuals from sure. the equation. And if you had to start out fresh from staff, you know, fresh, would you pay your youth services coordinator less per hour than you would pay your circulation assistants? So that's where I see the biggest disparity. Mm -hmm. So per hour, that position, which presumably has more responsibilities, is making less. So I don't know if I I don't know if I agree, but but this is this is an issue again related to the way the town does things that you sort of just get stuck on the track. Um, mm -hmm. So when again, you post, but this is an opportunity, right? When you post this new position, and I, I'm not saying that. So the line that is attached to Audra's circulation assistant, I'm not saying, oh, you should change that. I'm wondering if it's an opportunity to advertise the youth services coordinator position, you know, at least at 16 per hour. Like, can I, you I would love to do that. And, and um, the issue that becomes that the person who is occupying the circulation assistant position, who's been here for close to 10 years, says, why is that person starting at 16 and I'm at $16 after 10 years. Well, you have to say to yourself, again, if none of these people were here, if you had to replace every single one of these people, I, I'm not saying this no, is, I, I'm no. not saying that Karen is receiving the proper amount, but we don't have an opportunity. The only way we can increase her salary or any of our existing staff salary is to try to get the town to work through the sub system, right? But we have a different opportunity with our new hire. And I'm just, you know, I would hate to continue to lose people if we don't have to. But I don't, like, I don't want to put it completely out of whack. Like, I'm not saying, oh, we should advertise that position at 25 an hour or whatever. But I think if you had to replace your circulation assistant, you probably would be able to hire them for minimum wage. But I don't know how attractive a youth services coordinator at roughly minimum wage will be. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I understand what you're saying, although... Because it's a different job. It, well, it is a different, it is a different job. I was going to say the same thing, that, it, but yeah. a part-time circulation does person. Yes, it, it, th this is true if you, if you consider it in a generic way, but we, we do um, you know, rely on all these positions to do things that, that a lot of other libraries of our size would not do. And so there's, there was a question that went around on one of the listservs, probably a director's listserv, talking about, does anyone, um, does anyone working in a library who does not have an MLS degree order materials for the library? And so you had a number of libraries, you know, primarily larger ones, that said, no, no one 
without an MLS degree, selects material for the library collection. Because they have a large staff. They well, they have a large staff, and they're also very they're yeah. more hierarchical yeah. and fixed. Um, whereas we, because we're small, rely on you know the human resources that are inherent in our staff. So where we've had someone with a subject expertise and, and enthusiasm for it, they've gone and, and taken a lot of that on. So there is more to these positions than is just that you would imagine just by reading that job title. And so, you know, the willingness of people to take on more than, I'm not going to do that. I'm a circulation assistant. Why would I do that? You know, that's a common attitude in, you know, in kind of low wage work environments. And so we get a lot more out of our staff than one might expect to do. Um, and that I think also leads to longer, you know, longevity with people staying because they enjoy their work because it's very, they're not stuck in, you know, and they're not um, considered uh, inferior to other staff because of their credential and their job title or, or what have you. So I, I, this is kind of like one of the situations that's unfortunately a little bit of a, um, a no-win situation. I do agree that it would be more attractive to advertise the position for uh, for more, but it does it does introduce that issue with the existing staff of you know. Hey, what's going on? I've been here for ten years. You know. But that's it. That's a but different problem that we could try to help work towards solving, yeah. right? So I don't want you just to continue to create the same problem again and again. Mm -hmm. You know, you've already come to us and said, "Use services." It's a revolving door. Here are some of the ways. Yep. So if we do have this opportunity, I just don't want us to squander it. Mm -hmm. I also suspect. I mean, I just was at Target today, and the sign on the front door says they're. Rates start at sixteen fifty, which is actually lower than it was over the summer. But that aside, it it may be a necessity that that yep. that, that rate comes up, and then that may be part of what creates the groundswell for us to say we need to increase across the board, and probably not just at the library. Like I, I would imagine that there's other segments of the town that also need to be thinking about this. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we're all in support of the value that all yeah. every single employee, you know, brings. And if they all left and you had to rehire, I'm sure, sure. they would be equally as valuable. But some of the problems we can't solve, I'm only trying to solve the one that we can, maybe, right? Like, if you tell me you go to HR and they say, no, we refuse to post this at 1600 it's just going to be a direct replacement, I mean, $16, then there's nothing we can do, right? But I'm just tossing it out there. Incrementally, it's not a ton more to the you know overall budget, but it might feel a little better to apply for a job sure. at sixteen dollars an hour. I, I'm perfectly happy to revise that number and, and put it on that way. Um, as you say, I don't think it increases the bottom line. We're we're going to have to justify this one way or the other, and uh, you know I, I don't think the difference is that it, it's not going to change the final outcome when people evaluate this based on the need. Because again, we're going to go to the finance committee and the select board and say, asking for this much more, ten thousand or eleven thousand dollars, whatever, you know, a ten, whatever that is, a ten percent increase. But here is the here is the big pie chart of what we did in twenty nineteen, the last normal year of our operation versus you know twenty twenty two, and it's like this, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, and we're doing. X, Y, and Z right. that we didn't used to do before. Right, and especially for this position, right? This position did not used to have to supervise a you know a room dedicated to this mm -hmm. particular um, group of yeah. sometimes rowdy individuals. So I mean, it, it's like I feel like if any one of us got Paul on the carpet to say, "What is this? Why are you asking for more money?" I mean. Technically, it's a professional position. Again, no uh, insult on the circulation assistant, but it's just like that's to we the don't outside. Require, we don't require a degree. Yeah. Just to clarify, oh, we don't, we don't require a, new services? a oh. master's degree for that now. Oh. Well, we never have because, again, we were only able to offer a 15 hour position. Mm -hmm. The person who was in the position got boosted to 27 because we needed that help in coverage. Um, but she doesn't hold a, a degree. We can say that it's preferable, but again, you're advertising a job that uh, pays sixteen dollars an hour. Yeah. I'm looking more for um, someone with the right skill set and personality to to take on that yeah. take on that group. Yeah. Um, it's still more responsibility though than yeah, the it's circulation a different, assistant. Okay, 
we, we can agree to disagree on that, but it, but it's it, it it sort of depends on your mindset with that because some people um, find that work to be quite easy to to work with teenagers and, and rewarding. I mean, this is not this is not classroom work. This is kids yeah. coming in after school, so it's not like tied to curriculum or anything like that. It's keeping people occupied and engaged, and um, some people, some people love doing it in the same way that you know, Luna in the past has really enjoyed you know working with children and, and doing that kind of programming. It's just what they what they're kind of cut out to do. So that's kind of the hope that we'll find somebody that, that, you know, this is fun work for them to do. It's like what they like to do. One thing I might be inclined to suggest is if it is possible to say that there is a range of salary being offered or hourly rate depending on experience. Because if you had someone who wasn't, I don't know, a social worker who was tired of doing social work, who might find that to be a different and related kind of challenge, as opposed to someone who worked as a camp counselor. Yeah. I, I'm just pulling things out of the air, but if HR would allow a job description to be crafted so that there would be a range yeah. that might be one way to address this. So just, just, just I don't know if anything's changed because we haven't hired anyone in a little while, but even even in the, in the era of HR directors at Town Hall, we've never actually gone through HR for our hiring. We have always hired, you know, Plurit listed our jobs through the Board of Library Commissioners page. I'll give it to HR, but, but generally speaking, we're looking for you know, people that are that are scanning right. li mm -hmm. library, library looking for libraries. Anyway. But yeah. the position but doesn't have to be approved by I, HR. I've never had to town. do that. I've never oh, had to okay. do that in the past. We always oh, just okay. put it out there and we've never had a problem with it. Um, and we've never been told to do it a different way. So Okay. I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay. In that case it seems like it, you can put anything on this sheet, right? It could be approved or rejected. Right, because it's over for the final budget. Um, I'm not suggesting you put something wild and crazy, but yeah, I mean, I'm hoping if the if the request is modest, that it will be approved as is. And I, I you know, if they if if the town administrator's recommendation is, well, we'll give you half of what you asked, um, which if we ask for too much, that's what I imagine she'll do and say live within your means, which you know is understandable. Um, then we would have to make some hard choices. I'm trying to like thread thread the needle with what I think we can realistically ask for without asking for too much. And then, but maybe that's the wrong approach. I don't know. I mean, that's I've always been pretty cautious with how we approach this, and have, you know, we've had modest asks. But this is a time, if there was ever a time, to be a little bit more um, ambitious with what we what we ask for. It would be now because we have the numbers to back us up to just say like, look. You're yeah. asking people to do the same for the same amount of mm -hmm. number of hours and the same pay to do, you know, fifty percent more work, and it just eventually uh, catches up. You can't do that; it's not sustainable. Um, yeah, I would agree. This is a substantially different position now than it was in the old days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I would ask if anybody else has any other thoughts afterward. If we could share them with Patrick and or me, that would be useful and. Let's see if we can move along. Sure. Did, I don't know. Do you want to, as it stands, do you want to? In the past, there has usually been a vote to approve this budget by the trustees. Do you? Is that something that you want to do? I don't know if you are strictly required to do it, but that's what, what's always happened in the past. I move to accept the budget with the increase, the discussed increase on the librarian salaries. Mm -hmm. To reflect a $16 an hour rate for youth services coordinator. Is there a second? A second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, can I? I want to ask a question about the budget. Um, I heard, I understand the memo of understanding with CWMARS for the IT support. My question is. What are you going to do for the next six months? Or does that start now? Or it starts now. Um, 
So this 1325 is for like December 1 to December 1? I believe, it's our, I believe it's, it, goes into a, it goes into effect January 1st. So yeah, it is half the year and it may change next year. But if I know next year that it's going to be a different amount, um, I should be able to budget for it ahead of time. So this is going to take us. This is going to. Take, you're asking how am I going to pay for the first half of that contract? We have existing money in IT okay. that can be used for that. And if that is, if that comes up short, then I would draw on Lightning to okay. to pay the balance. I was just trying to understand if this was six months or twelve months, and it is twelve months. It's twelve months starting January first. Okay. So I need to withdraw my motion because I realized when I reviewed the salary again. Um, that in here is your salary with no increase. And we need to discuss that first, set that, and then redo the entire, this staff line, all the staff line. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. that's so true. let's, I'm going to withdraw it and I will make another motion at the end of the meeting that will reflect the $16 for the one line and whatever the salary increases for the next line. Good call, okay. good catch. Patrick, back to the yeah uh, roof roof for uh, HVAC. We're going to have a meeting on Friday um, that Lynn and I will be at, and it's it's mostly about the roof and, and kind of getting everyone speaking on the same page about what has been recommended by Phil as a, uh, a next step. But I'm going to bring up the HVAC uh, issue because Gary will be at that meeting, and he's the person who has been tasked with communicating with Corcoran about coming up with a potential solution if there is one for the noise on the, on the back path. And what, at, at, the, at our next meeting? Uh, we're having a meeting on Friday. Oh, okay. With, with uh, Lynn and I, Gary for building maintenance, Tom, building inspector, okay. Carolyn and Jennifer. We're gonna be talking about a number of things and I'm going to just kind of bring this into the conversation because opportunistically Gary will be there and, and Carolyn, I'm gonna bring Carolyn up to speed that we have a complaint from a neighbor and it, it needs to be resolved. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because he did call, uh, Mr. Bakula did call again and, and um, mentioned that he had heard the machinery come on at 3 in the morning on a cold night and I said, okay, I'll do what we can do. Um, roof warranty, um, so you all know that, the, that, that that was rejected. Um, in the meantime, once we had that information, I called. Uh, Phil uh, and asked him and, and talked to Mark as well. And I said, okay, well, what are the potential solutions here? Is it gutters? And gutters could work, but they're, those are inherently problematic and in that they require a lot of maintenance to keep clear. They're up on a high roof, et cetera. We'd have to have snow guards installed and all kinds of other stuff. Um, so the next uh, best solution that doesn't require additional maintenance would be to have a protective layer under the drip line because in the warranty, um, and the analysis of the manufacturer, they said all the damage that you are pointing to is under the drip line of the upper roof. So it's either one of two things. It's either the water coming off of the upper roof, hitting the lower roof, and then eroding the shingles beneath. Or, this is Phil's theory, Phil does not believe that that's what's happening. Phil believes that what happened was at the time of construction, the general contractor did not put down appropriate um, plywood or whatever, so that when the workers were on the roof doing, you know, installing the glass, what do you call it, glass reinforced concrete panels onto the wall, installing the clerestory windows, that their boots and, you know, working on the roof is what damaged it, and that is what uh, the building sector is pointing to when they go up and look at the roof. So at this point, I don't know that there's any way to forensically prove this one way or the other. All I know is that they are not satisfied with the way the roof is. Some people are saying that the roof is failing. Phil and Mark do not believe it is failing. They think it's been damaged in some way. And so, but in order to satisfy the, the needs of the you know, folks that are concerned, one thing that could be done would be to put down a layer of flashing under that, essentially what's, for all intents and purposes, flashing. Um, um, Using metal roofing, either flat seam or standing seam metal in the in the shadow of that drip line to protect it when water comes off. And from there, the solar will be able to be installed onto the normal shingle roof. So we're hoping that when we go to have this meeting on Friday, that that, that 
proposal will be satisfactory, although we don't have a scope of work, we don't have a cost associated with that. And I did ask Bill if he had any, any idea what this might cost, and he was hesitant to say he didn't really know. He suggested that once we have a sketch from him, that we take it to roofers and get prices. So I have no idea if this is something that we would be able to just get quotes for or if we would have to go out to bid because I just I have no idea. Um, but at least we're coming closer to a solution to get us past this, you know, this problem. Um, we're also going to talk on that meeting. I'm going to talk with Carolyn about um, things related to our lead certification, which at this point for my conversations with um, Phil and the person that um, oversees the lead for JRA, we're kind of on the, we're on the cusp. Um, and if we're missing components, like without solar, we're missing points. Without the car charging station, we're missing points. Um, we need to, this is a, not even a, a point thing, we have to provide a um, collection receptacle for uh, e-waste recycling. So we need to be able to collect like batteries and phones and stuff like that. However, there is no actual waste stream and happy for that kind of thing. And I spoke with the recycling coordinator, like the official recycling coordinator for the town, and said, so what's up with this? What do we do? And, or what do we do? And she said, we don't do anything. Uh, and I said, okay. Um, and so I talked to Carolyn about it and, and raised the question if this is something that the transfer station, so the transfer station is a, is a contracted, um, it's not really part of the town, but it's a contract mm -hmm. business that comes in and, and handles that. So I said, well, is this something that, that could be proposed to them as part of that contract that they would handle the disposal of that? Because at this point, we don't, we can collect it, but what, what do we do with it? It's gonna pile up. And um, she said that we could, uh, we could look into that. So she's, we'll talk, I think, a little bit about that on Friday as well. Uh, so much, much to do. Um, so can I ask Beth yes. about the roof? So yeah. The roof and the lead are all sort of linked together. So if the, the, I guess my first question is, and I don't remember this from the project, is there a statute of limitations on our application for lead status? I asked relative to the MBLC or relative to just, yeah. just, just getting certified? Relative to the MBLC to qualify for the grant. That I don't know, and I haven't. I haven't asked them that. What I have been, and what I did ask Bill, and I didn't get an answer was: Is there a statute of limitations on getting certified? Mm -hmm. How long can we be open for before it no longer applies to us? Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't get an answer to that question, so I don't really know if the clock is running out. Okay. And all I know is he's been saying that they have been holding back on their application. But right, because they want to make sure it's successful. Right, but yeah. I don't know if there's a point of no return after which you like. I'm yeah. sorry, it's too late. Because honestly, the only reason we need the lead certification is to qualify to get the hundred thousand dollars from the MBLC, which is a very nice incentive. It sure <laughs> certainly is, it's right? Well worth it. Uh, Correct. So you know, just sort of going through the, you know, the things that we could do to get to lead certification, right? So if we do the solar panels, it would secure our lead certification. It would also make us. A more sustainable building and save the money, the town money. If we put in the EV charging station, the outlay of money is relatively little, even if we honestly just paid for it directly out of pocket and didn't go through the granting agency. It just takes time. Like it's, you know, that's what I discovered in doing it. It just takes time, time that somebody has to do. It, it should, when I looked at that metric he sent, get a, you know, put us enough comfortably over that edge. Um, does it make us any more sustainable or save the town money? No, not really. I mean, the EV charging station. I mean, yes, it's great for the grid. Hey, I have an EV now, and sure, I struggle to find things, but because I now have an EV, I also know the best solution is for the entire town to put in the same system to work together because it's very frustrating to have to download seven different apps in hopes that some, you know, it's like if you had to do an entirely different process yeah. when you went to the Shell station versus the Exxon station versus the Pride station. And that's kind of where the EV charging landscape is right now. Um, so it, it would be great if some larger entity like the sustainability committee or whatever that 
thing is called. I don't remember the name. So I will make a stab at contacting Jack again and ask him, hey, is there any roadmap for this? Just so we know. Um, but for me, I guess what it's all coming down to is if the roof is what is keeping it, you know, holding us back from actually being able to go so out to bid for solar, like, I'm 100% in favor of, look, if the solution that they will accept is to completely replace that section of the roof, I feel like it's not really good for sustainability. But, you know, eventually we wanted to get a metal roof anyway, you know, when this roof eased its lifetime. Um, so, anyway, I guess I'm saying anything that we can do to do the the right thing and any way we can impress upon you know the town that this is was going to save you money yeah. i mean i know we've tried but well the, 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 the clock is ticking the, the I, clock I, is ticking. so can we find out if the clock is ticking so that we can say to them the clock is ticking we need to do x y and z by yeah. by this yeah i will i will right back and ask that question again um and I can also let Jack know, since Jack was part of the library building process, that you know the, the LEED certification is potentially in jeopardy if we don't do one of two things. Mm -hmm. Can you help us be the solution for the, you know, for an EV charging station? Because we want to have a unified solution for the town. Which is the best for the town, not just us and, trying you know, to do our We're trying to save $100,000. Yeah. Even exactly. if we had to spend more money to put a section of metal roof up there, yeah. it's going to be less than a hundred thousand. Correct. And so you still but have gains. Well, that's, your, that's worst case scenario. Hopefully, yeah. you're only having to put up, you know, something on a section to protect but one part. Of it, but right. But just I'm just saying, yeah. worst case scenario, yes. it is still beneficial to the town sure. to do something. If there are intermediate steps that can be taken that are even more beneficial, then we should pursue those. Yeah. Okay. We did. We did get a quote though for metal. For we know what it's going to cost to do that, and it was more than, if I remember correctly, more than two hundred thousand dollars. So that that's for just that section. For all the lower sections, for because this applies to all of the lower roofs, not just the ones that we put solar on. Anything that water is coming off of from a high roof to a low roof. Is what we're talking about. I thought they were only questioning two of those sections. I don't believe so. I thought it was any, any okay. of them. So, and at that point, if you were just if you were replacing just two sections, it would look really weird to have like some lower roofs with shingles and then yeah, these two roofs with metal. But that's a static choice. Moving on. Yep. Moving on. Um, Uh, Donald Wall, we are, I am back in touch with Dan, he mercifully returned my phone call today, they're apparently moving to a new, new facility or renovating their, their workspace, and so he is behind, but he is working on the, the wooden book spines, um, I don't know when that's going to arrive, but he does, he did say that it is in process, he um, did confirm that he got all of the orders for slate plaques and he will be fabricating those including one for the um, local history room which will list all of the um, all the individual donors to that room because there was something like you know 30 or 40 that contributed contributed to that project so there's going to be a little plaque that says all of those people's names um, and then this is one that i was going to actually was going to ask alan did but he's no longer with us to to, to do this uh, but the friends of the Hadley Preschool uh, are looking to use this room on at nine o'clock on Saturday mornings. Staff, um, I put it out there. If staff, any of the staff for Saturdays were willing to come in an hour early to let them in, that would be great. Uh, it, we're going to maybe have a staff person doing that once. Karen can't do it, and then I'll just maybe leaving. So it, that leaves us without someone to do it. I can tell them that we can't do it, but I would really like to accommodate them. This is something that they would be able to do if we had the access hardware for the for the room. And so this is just a bunch of families with young children coming in and using the space for like a you know for a play group on Saturday mornings. So I'm wondering if there's anyone, uh, any trustee who has 
uh, a key who would be willing to meet that group on Saturdays for um, for the short term after January on Saturday, Saturday mornings to just let this group in and then the regular staff will show up more like 9.30. I could do that. You would be willing to do that? Mm -hmm. That would be really great. Um, of course, if you have a conflict, just let one of us know. Yeah, I could do it on. I could do it occasionally. I couldn't commit to doing it every Saturday, but this is once a month. But I could be. It's once. A month. Oh, sorry. Okay. 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 Well, if once a month you need backup, you've got a yes. couple. Of right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if we just. I thought it was every every. No, Saturday. sorry. Thank you. Wow. Even if we just took turns. Yeah. Okay. As availability it, a lot. Is that upcoming? Like. It's not. It's not coming until they would not need. Um, someone to help them out with that until February. Oh. Because August will be here, I think, to let them in on, oh. on, the, on the January date. And uh, they already met this month okay. and started at 10. But they asked if they could move it earlier. And I said, I would, I would try. And it's the first Saturday? It's the second Saturday. Second. So I'm not sure that, what that would be. That's all, that's all. Well, we can revisit it in January sure. to make sure that everything is Lined up. I will just say that I'm excited about the oversized shelving because I have been pulling and labeling all of the books that are going to go on. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. Did you say that's nine? Nine. February nine. No, the nine. Oh, nine a.m. Nine a.m. Oh, Patrick, did you want to just briefly mention custodial services? Uh, I say about custodial services. We, we did request um, an additional, that, that custodial services be upgraded. Is that what you're referring to? Um, I did request through Carolyn um, because it has been it actually has been noted by Carolyn that sometimes when she has been here for meetings that involve other departments, she has kind of said, well, how often do you get cleaned? And I'm like, two days a week. Um, so she agrees that this is something that, that should be revisited and, and they're hoping to expand the cleaning schedule. I don't know what it will be to three days, four days. I don't know what it is, but we, we could definitely use more cleaning when we're having, you know, 100 plus people in here, sometimes 150 people a day. Um, it's two, two days a week is not enough. Surprised to hear it's only two. Yeah. <laughs> Susan. Yes. What does the MLC have to say? Uh, on November 15th, I attended a Zoom meeting um, with the CLB. Um, maybe the name will mean something to you that it mean anything to me. It was hosted by Maura Didi and Rob Fabini. Uh, and the topic was um, meeting rooms and libraries and um, what are the hot topics and, and what to do about it. The gist of it was um, things like uh, who do you let use a public library community room and if, do you have rules and regulations about who can and who cannot and who decides who can and cannot and what does the law say about you making decisions about who can and cannot, um, and what happens when some people protest that some people are using it for their own brand of activism and other people object to it, um, and you know the whole freedom of speech and uh, the whole uh, Zoom meeting, which seemed to be statewide, different representatives of libraries across the state came in and uh, I did feel like it sort of became a college uh, philosophy class of uh, situational ethics uh, you know it, that had no answers well what if yeah but then what if but then what if and um, the people from MBLA really had no answers they said you know that the the law is pretty vague, you know, it doesn't really commit to anything. Uh, and so libraries are kind of writing their own rules. And they gave some examples and references of different communities uh, who wrote things. Um, 
she was saying that Mass General Law um, in one of their um, policies of public libraries uses the word should. You should make such facilities available. Um, it should be equitable, viewpoint neutral, but it doesn't say you have to. So really vague word. Um, they um, noted Forbes library policy, uh, who can use it, um, Haverville Public Library. Um, people talked about meeting rooms versus study rooms um, and making a distinction between that and that helps distinguish what you can and can't do. Um, what if you get someone who comes in uh, who is part of a hate speech organization? I mean, they went into all of the what ifs. What if, you know? And there's my impression of the whole thing was there's really no, there's no legislation, there's no clear answers. People are just doing what they can do. Um, they talked about public library calendars. What do, what responsibility does a public library have? the calendar. Is everything listed on the calendar? So if you've signed out a room um, and you have this extreme political view, does it get listed on the public calendar? Or is the public calendar, is the library calendar only for things that the library specifically is sponsoring? Um, that's actually a point that, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but that's actually a point that I think in the policy um, and this is not something we've implemented uh, and, and probably should revisit. We have not been, we don't post, and I, nor do I think we should post a, you know, event. If someone reserves the room for, you know, Bob's 80th birthday party, which is something that happened, they, you know, want to have a get to it. Like, why would we, why would we list that on the calendar other than, I mean, that's a different thing than a library program or, um, what happened? But the policy says that that events will be listed on the calendar, and I'm not really sure why we made that decision. But it, it probably should be revisited because it seems, you know, like an odd thing. It, it, because it, that implies that that Bob's birthday party is something that you might want to come to, even though you're not invited. Yeah, it right. it, um, it implies some, something of public, publicness, but also right. it doesn't. Yeah, it kind of implies an endorsement. Too. Right. So, right. So, so I, mean, I think really only our, our events yeah. calendar. I mean, I think that the, the, the calendar itself, if someone came up and said, I'd like to see what's on your meeting room calendar, mm -hmm. I, I don't see why that isn't public information. I would show it to them, but that's not the same thing as like posting it to uh, right. information for people to look at on yeah. our website or, or what have you. Yeah. So, um, I would so, think a lot of groups using this room wouldn't want their event publicized in that way, too. I mean, some would and some wouldn't. Like, right. Well, some are. Some are if it's say the Girl Scouts, but it's their right. responsibility yeah. <laughs> to tell your, you know, hey, come to the Girl Scouts. Right. It's like, right. But it is their yeah. responsibility to do the publicity. Right. It is not right. our obligation. Exactly. Yeah. Which is, yeah, and that's something we want to avoid. We want to avoid the expectation that we're here to promote no. that. We're not. So it's uh, enough to say that the room is available or it is otherwise engaged. Right. But it is well, something to keep in mind if and when we get our you know, door system so that folks can, you know, access the room after hours and then we'll, you know, in theory have a, you know, electronic calendaring system or whatever, like, you know, is the town's intention that anything on that calendar would automatically go on to the larger calendar? Like, I don't know, just something to keep in right. mind that we need to remember to ask a thing about time. And these were the things that they were debating. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if it's a town facility, then is it public knowledge? You know, does it go on a general calendar or doesn't it? Um, do you charge fees or do you not? And who do you charge fees to and who do you not charge fees to and who decides that? And what's the legality behind all that? So it was a lot of this. It was a lot of really good questions, but there were no firm answers on anything. Um, can you write a policy that's for residents only? Um, if it's a Hadley Public Library, is the policy only for Hadley citizens? Or is because it's a public library, it's for anyone? Like, so a lot of debatable questions. Um, and were there any, uh, like, 
actual libraries that were there to say this has been our experience, this has worked really well, or was it more of in the realm of theory? Both. So there were libraries that said we did X, Y, Z and it worked out really well. And then someone almost always had a counterpoint. Well, we tried the same thing and then this happened and we're not going to do that again, you know. And so um, I was left with the feeling that, um, you know, like life is nowadays, there's a lot of big questions and not a lot of answers to big questions that towns are kind of just doing what they're doing in the moment until it really gets challenged. Um, and then they're amending it. Um, and it's sort of that squeaky wheel idea of how things happen. You know, that one person just yells and yells and yells and yells about it. And so we make policy changes or adjustments. It was interesting. But uh, I didn't come away with any answers. <laughs> Probably frustrated with the fact that it was so vague. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, this is all new for me. Um, this whole into all of this. So it was, it was interesting. Certainly, much more complex than meets the eye to the average person who has no background in. in Um, Smith Fund recognition update. I have permission to borrow three small quilts that Char Smith constructed. Um, I think the day that that was confirmed is either within 48 hours of when this artist's work was hung. So that sort of kind of complicated matters. So I think this is probably not going to happen perhaps until February. But it will happen and we will have visual aid to go with it. And um, I'll work with Patrick to come up with a press release for the time that we do have this little exhibit. So that is the extent of that. Maureen, have the friends done anything interesting? Not really, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I mean, they, they're uh, doing different things with the uh, books. Um, Like what was the last the last month? Trying to remember the last meeting. The last two meetings, Jared yeah, has not been present, yeah. so that, that, that we've been a little bit derailed in our uh, in whatever the agenda would have been. Um, uh, that was that that was the meeting that we met in the we met yeah. in the history room. Yeah. yeah. The last meeting we uh, we the library requested that the friends support um, our film license, our okay. annual film license, to allow us to publicly uh, show films here. Uh, and so we were actually playing the first film. If you remember last year, we did like a whole series of films. We're, we're being a little less ambitious this time. Um, I think we had hoped that the friends would also sort of step in and support, you know, doing like a little vending thing mm -hmm. to raise money for, like, for the friends, just like popcorn and, you know, drinks and some candy or something like that. But at this moment, it, it doesn't feel like that. Uh, is going to happen right now, but it's an opportunity, I think, in the future for the friends, especially if they're um, paying for that license and mm -hmm. they have ownership of it. Um, so we'll see, but they're, they're, they're not you know, that's super organized right now. But the book room is going well. I mean, we're yeah. having a lot of people coming in and, and enjoying um, browsing in there. People come out and putting their money in the milk can. Um, and um, it seems like there's a little collections that. Um, we're coming in the um of donations. Yeah. Well stuff is always yeah, stuff is always coming in, it always always yeah. has and always will. Yeah. <laughs>
But yeah, it was a, it was a quiet meeting. It was pretty short and sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Maureen and Jessica, do you want to start the conversation about the director of evaluation? I thought we were almost ready to go. Okay. <laughs> Do you, do you want to just sort of review like what you yeah what you've sent? So um, we have some recommendations, I guess, to share. Yeah. So uh, we compiled the overall score. Um, do I say it or no? I, I we all have, have it in front of us. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, speak to the document, yes, but don't read it to us. Oh, all right. Wait, okay. do I have this? Uh, I you sent me the one with the, the staff one, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I have. I've given this to you. Oh, okay. That's fine. Right. Reserved to. No. Good. I didn't print out a copy or give it to you. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. For Patrick. I, I can see it right here. Oh. Um. I can send it to you. No, it's okay. I don't okay. Know. I'm sorry, I'm new. <laughs> I'm not new, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, so we uh, we got the different numbers. We got the staff uh, overview, uh, trustee comments on um, all the different sections, and um, our goals are. But we'd like to uh, see more evaluations done, or evaluations done at the staff. Which, which at this point has been done. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And then, well, good, because we're halfway through this <laughs> year from this <laughs> evaluation. It's just a bizarre, like, leap in time. Yeah. Um, so check mark. Yeah. <laughs> and, I think one of the things that we, I mean, one of the major hindrances in this process is that we made big changes to the process and then I had to dip out for two months. Um, and so I think that there was more um, that we would have liked to have been able to do in this process that just wasn't possible. Um, and so I think one of the things that, that struck us um, was when we averaged out the numbers, they didn't compare to last year's, and we changed the form this year. And so that, to me, seems problematic because the comments were not, you know, negative. Um, there was nothing in, in the comments that indicated a change from last year's numbers to this year's numbers. Um, and that's something that we wanted to be able to look at and say what's going on here with the process that's causing this, um, but we're now down to the wire. Um, we looked through all the comments and they are generally quite positive. Yeah. Um, it just it worked out that the overall average was lower than last year. Um, we, um, and so that just feels like there, there was a there was something with the, the process or with the revised form that we used that we might have had an opportunity to discuss and troubleshoot if I were if half of the committee were actually present to do that work um, this fall. So I think that's one of the conundrums that we have. I think that we got between between the, the comments that we got from trustees, um, the comments from staff, um, which also was another area that we would have liked to have probed a little further. Yeah. Um, um, and you know, and a review of Patrick's self-evaluation, which brought up a number of ways in which um, this year had a lot of big things, um, a lot of challenges, 
um, that he, you know, addressed very, very well. Um, we don't feel that the, the, the just sort of mechanical averaging of the numbers really seems to represent what we see in that whole package. I would just perhaps offer the observation that one third of the board is new. Yeah. And so they don't have the full range of experience mm -hmm. and in the context of doing this evaluation within the framework of a fiscal year and theoretically not incorporating experiences or knowledge outside of that, mm -hmm. I found that to be quite challenging. Yeah. And it was difficult to feel that I had anything substantive to contribute despite the fact that I've known Patrick for several years in other contexts, but that's, it's not appropriate to bring that into this. So I think that also, I don't know that that had a tremendous effect on the numbers and averages, but I am sure that that limited the quality and substance of the comments mm -hmm. so that you don't have as much to work with. It also, I think, adds to a sense, you know, this was my first year actually completing the evaluation because the previous year I didn't have the experience to do so. So, so in terms of, um, Sort of having a consistent a consistency, I think that's that's a huge challenge this at this time. So I'll just say that I looked at the numbers, and um, you know I know that you guys had mentioned that in you know in your summary. I didn't even worry about comparing last year's to this year's. I just said, oh, you guys want us to come up with some goals. Mm -hmm. So you know I'm looking at all these averages across these things. I don't see a problem like I don't right. see a problem in any of the areas but if I had to come up with some goals let's make it that some goals in some of the areas that were maybe not as you know all good but less good right so like I'll take personnel for example right so one of the things the staff had said and that was maybe that you know one of the lower areas wanting to have evaluations done on a yearly basis so I didn't even Patrick didn't pay me to say this. I didn't know he was in the process of doing these annual, but that, that to me should be a goal for Patrick for next year, right? Mm -hmm. It just what happens that he's done it, doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. but I feel like that should be a goal um, because it fits with, you know, sort of what we're seeing here in terms of metrics and what the staff reported. And it's good, it's good for the staff, it's good for Patrick. Well, it's, it's actually a goal, it was actually a goal that was put forward at the last evaluation, and it was just that it was because of everything that was going on, it was I was slow to actually implement it, and so it, it took a little longer to do that. But you know, it did it did get done ultimately, and it's now going to become an ongoing you know goal. Year. Well, it's not a goal; it's just like part of my to do this for the year. It's not like it's not yeah. new. We're already implementing it, yeah. and we're right. doing it. So, um, yeah. Um, I, you know, I think I think. Um, that was also a goal that I sort of proposed. So yay that it's already in place. I think like one of the things that struck me in looking through the comments from trustees, and I'm just trying to pull this document up, um, was that there were there were just really positive comments in all of the sections. Um, and so it was not easy to look through this and say like, oh, here's some obvious goals. Um, you know, in terms of administration, the amount of administrative work in, you know, this much busier library and with all of the um, new, you know, with all of the kind of physical plant issues, um, you know, lots of um, applause in here for that. Um, the budget one, it was like, yep, <laughs> that's going well. <laughs> We get the numbers, we see them, you're advocating for things that are important. Um, 
personnel. These are just the, the, the general categories. Um, uh, so personnel, there's, um, I think we've already, we've already discussed that one, planning and policy. I think we've looked at some new policies this year and those brought, were brought to us and um, there was, you know, they were well thought out and researched. Our feedback was taken into account and the policies are in place. Um, outreach and coordination. I think that there's, um, again, sort of positive comments here about the way that you show up. <laughs> Um, you know, town committees, um, the sort of larger presence that the library has in the community. Um, so, you know, I think there's 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 a lot of like really um, great work that that happened here in whatever year this is, twenty twenty one, <laughs> whatever. Um, that we you know that that this documents so. Um, that aspect of it is great. It, it just it struck me like, oh well, why is the number? Why does the number average out to be? It's not like dramatically lower, but it just seemed odd. Like there wasn't a calibration um, that I think we wanted it to have. So um, so the, this comes back to the recommendations for a raise and. Um, and the issue of the amendment you wanted to make to the to the budget. Um, I'm also wondering if there are other goals um, that trustees have identified that you kind of are already kind of working <laughs> on that we haven't discussed. Um, I think. One of the things that I'm thinking about um, in that respect is, um, as I'm kind of getting back on my feet, I do want to take on the project that we discussed a few months ago of creating community input on kind of how are we doing, what are the needs, and so um, you know there there may be a goal there around sort of participating in that and you know in developing um, you know plan or programs or um, staffing increases or whatever recommendations in response to to that um, but I'm wondering uh, what other if there's other goals maybe to start well I, I mean so I, I the way I think about this is that um, and I think we talked about a little bit about this when we met when Maureen, Maureen and, and you and I all met um, yeah. when we were talking about this process. And, yeah. But I, um, I have been fortunate in this job in the sense that when I started it, I came in at the time when we were beginning to do the work of you know, the planning and design process. I came right at the beginning when we had just gotten that grant. And so my, the way I interpret what my role here is in, in essence to uh, be implementing the vision of the trustees. That doesn't mean that I don't think independently of the trustees and that I don't devise things on my own based on what I see in, um, in, in the library. But in a way, you know, I've always seen like the, that, that kind of goal making as, as a collaborative and organizational thing. Because if the trustees are you know, united in saying, well, or, you know, all agree that there are some things that we should be working on, then I show up to work and I know what some of my day is going to be occupied with. So, and I, I've said that in the past, that I, I'm hoping that now that we're in this new building, that we can start to think about, because it's not so clear cut now, it's not like go to work, build a library, you know, <laughs> and then do other management things. It's more like we're here, and what are we going to do with the space? And so there are a lot of opportunities, this is a different environment, it's dynamic and it's changing all the time. Um, so to me, my, my goal, I mean, I have lots of things, that, again, that I will continue to work on, like, you know, organizing the local history room, getting, you know, things digitized and available to go online, but these are long-term, you know, projects and things like that. But I, I feel like we need to have an opportunity to talk as a group, um, because the group is in flux and, you know, opinions are going to change about what's important and what, you know, where the emphasis should be. But in order for me to really feel like 
I am doing the job that the trustees would like me to be doing and not running counter to it or disrupting it, I, we kind of need to have like that larger vision thing. So I'm hoping that there will be more of that so that it's not just sort of a, you know, because the goals thing just seems kind of squishy. Like, I mean, there's so much to do. I could work, you know, 80 hours a week. I don't want to work 80, 80 hours a week. But, you know, you could just sort of like work until you drop because there's so many things to be done in any given week. Um, so, you know, the goal making is good, but I feel like it really needs to be in the context of like, what are we about as an organization? Where are we trying to go? So that I can then put my emphasis on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm happy to hear any specific, you know, things related to this, to this evaluation um, that I should turn my attention to. I'm happy to strive to improve. Um, but in, at the end of the day, I feel like this, you know, this process, it's due diligence, it's, but at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be someone making a motion to say, yes, you did your job and here's the recommendation, we think you should get paid X or Y. Um, so, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of just going off, but that's how I feel about the process. That makes any sense. So, it strikes me, I, I think one of the things that I heard you say there at the end is like thinking about, well one, like goals that are tied to the vision of the trustees, right? Um, but I think also to speak to the 80 hours a week thing, which is very real, um, not thinking of this as like a task list um, to add to an already <laughs> existing task list, but as a, a way to guide priorities. Yep. So. And like it, it's a two-way street, right? So I don't necessarily think your job is just to carry out our vision, right? I think you represent the staff, you represent yourself, right? Sure. So part of our job is to, you know, quote unquote, supervise you, right? But that includes like hearing where do you want to go as a library director? What is your vision sure. for a you know 21st century library? What does that look like to you now that you have had the time to to think? You know you've had a full year to live in this space to really think about this and reflect upon that. Like for me, I feel like I also have spent these multiple years trying to build this library and haven't really taking the time to think, oh, like, what do we have? I still, they're thinking, well, what still needs to get done? You know, which I, I, I'd like to get away from thinking that way. I hope that you can get away from thinking that way. Like, I am genuinely interested in what our talented library director, you know, sees for the library and, and really for yourself, right? So if, if this were my workplace and you were my employer and I didn't have a whole, it was just the two of us, I'm your supervisor, I would say, okay, you know, we've had this big job, we just got through this, now what, what would you like to focus on? Like, where do you want to go and how can I help you get there, right? So, I mean, that's kind of what I'm interested in hearing, you know, not just what our vision is, but what, what do you want to do? If you had, you know, five extra hours of every week that you could be freed up from something, what would you choose to focus on? You know, are you interested in digitization and making a beautiful digital website of all our resources. Are you interested in local history? What do you what do you feel passionate about? What do you feel like the library of the 21st century needs that maybe we don't have and you'd like to get us there? Uh, is that is that an actual question that you're It is. Yeah. I mean we yeah. have the answer it today, yeah. but I'm just sure. sort of Absolutely. putting it out there. Right. I mean and it's a very long list. I mean there are so many things that we can that we can focus on and um, you know, the potential of this library really is, in my mind, is less about, you know, what we as staff create. This is a limit to what we can do. There's only like five of us on the staff and there's only so many hours of the day. It's really um, unleashing the potential of the community to make use of the space in all of the ways that it can be made use of. So we've already had in the last year, we've had you know, a dance performance, like an ongoing series of dance performances in the, in the main hall that happened like after we closed the library. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the space was used in, in, in ways that you wouldn't necessarily think were consistent with the, you know, the mission of a library. And yet, there you are. Someone came to us, I didn't, we didn't dream that up. Someone came to us and said, I really love the space, I would like to do this performance. And you know, I see it as my job to weigh that and say yes as much as possible, yes to the community to come in and do more and more things 
uh, of all kinds here. Uh, and that, that, in, that is a logistical challenge. It, it, you know, it takes time and is a commitment. Um, so we can't say yes to everything, but as much as possible, I want the, you know, the community to feel like they can come to, to us, sit down and say, I have an idea. Can we do this in the space? We've got a, you know, we have music in the space now, um, at least a couple of times. Um, you know, art being displayed. So, so to me, it, it really is about that, of making it more available to the community to make sure people know that this is a space that they can take advantage of and, and use. But as well, uh, you know, I did mention the, the effort to kind of have the library be at the center of um, the, the, the kind of cataloging of local history, artifacts, and resources so that people can, rather than having to go to multiple you know, um, silos that may or may not be well documented or, or accessible, to be able to see some, see into those spaces, to see, you know, digitized maps or photos or, you know, things that we don't necessarily know because we don't have the room to have all those things, but we can certainly make them available on on, a, on the town website or through the, you know, the internet archive or whoever it is that um, that is the, you know, repository for that sort of thing. That, you know, so Boston Public Library does a lot of digitizing. We're on the waiting list to have some of that work done. Um, in the meantime, it would be, uh, and I've talked to some people, uh, but there's, there's more to do in terms of identifying where stuff is, where is all this buried treasure that we should be preserving and making available. So that's something that I feel very strongly about, but it's a time consuming process to, to do that work. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there are any number of uh, things like that. There, you know, there are amb ambitions that the staff have to do things like community reads and, and, and things like that. And again, it's a challenge to, to find the time and the bandwidth to do it. Uh, but those are things that, that people want to do, and I'd like to set them loose to, to do those things. So I don't know. I think the sky's the limit, really, but it's just a matter of how to get it all done. And we can't get it all done at, you know, with the limited time that you know the staff is here, but you know, just tossing it out there that maybe next time you know, if you could pick one of those things, what what does that look like? What does doing that look like, right? So, you know, the local history, for example, you know, what would it take to move the needle to where you thought is possible in one year, right? Would that require uh, money? Uh, would that require, uh, you know, a little group of foot soldiers that would be volunteers that would help with some of this stuff? Does it involve the schools? Does it involve Porter Phelps? What, like, what, what does it involve? Like, tell us what you think that would take, and and how you at, can. At this point, the, the impediments are external to us. There, there is a logjam that is, I guess, possibly created by COVID um, institutionally, where Boston Public Library can't take our stuff. It's really a matter of feeding them the stuff, and they're so backed up that they that they can't do it. They do the work. This is a great opportunity, mm -hmm. at okay. no cost to us. You know, they get the material, they digitize it. We provide some metadata, um, but then it goes up and it becomes available. At, at, you know, with very little effort from us, it's just that they are they're slammed and can't get it done. But um, well, so then, as, as I would say to my employees, then don't make a goal that you are not personally able to to do. Right? If it's relying well, on yeah, someone else, absolutely. Anymore, but at some point, yeah. they're going to call me on the phone and say, "Yes, when can you have some? Yeah, can you get some stuff to us." And I, at that point, I will be. You know, right. changing gears and picking that up and getting it to them because I don't want to wait another year. Right. So, and I think that's great. Like, make sure that we know right. that in, you know, as I also say to my employees, in case I win the lottery or get hit by a bus, the person that then sits in my seat and picks up all of your files and says, well, you're supposed to have to do this by then. Why isn't this done? Right? Like, don't set it up for yourself. Set yourself up for success and that should be part of our job is to, you know, so duly noted this is what it, you've already put in for this help, and if Boston Public Library calls you up today, you're going to need to pivot to do that, right? So you might have that as a goal, but you also, have, you know, we all know, need to know that might not be achievable, but that might not be your fault. Yes, but there is work that can be accomplished that is that is down to us, which is you know, kind of doing that survey work of, of figuring out what exists, yeah. you know, talking to different organizations and saying, are you partnering on this? Is this something that you want to pursue? Or no, no, we, we don't want to do that. 
Um, that, but that's something that, you know, that's a conversation that I have started and will continue to have with other, you know, groups that I haven't talked to yet. Um, so that, that's work that can be done in advance. I just can't really promise anything to them because a lot of this is based on external circumstances. Yeah. Um, but we can certainly start a conversation and discover what's out there. And what's you know what's in danger because the, the clock is t ticking on some of these items. You know they've got a vault in which I have never been in, but I've heard that of the, the vault in the basement of the town hall, which is full of you know bouldering documents that are not really well preserved. So mm -hmm. maybe there are things down there that mm -hmm. should be you know digitized and accessible in this way, but it remains to be seen. So that's that's something. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you to say the same thing to your. You know, staff that you know are going to be here, um, you know, especially your, you know, I'll, I'll call it your full-time staff, right? I know that maybe it's really called reporters or whatever, but if they could each pick one thing, what would that be and what would it take to get there, right? Does this take professional development funds or, again, a, a bunch of foot soldiers to help them operationalize the community read or whatever it is, right? So I think if each one of you has a, you know a goal that's working you know towards something that you're each passionate about it's going to make the library better and ideally it will make your own lives here at the library you know be more enjoyable and that's you know that's better for everyone so like i, I would love to see that i would love to like actually hear what those things were if you could pick just one and your staff members if they could pick just one we can work on, on doing that, and that's a conversation with the, that I will have with them uh, going forward. I mean, we do, we do have that. I mean, they have, as I said, like the community reads thing is something that Sue feels strongly about. Um, you know, we've identified a source of funding to help to do that. Friends are, are in support of it. Um, and uh, we actually did have an event planned that then fell through because the author became unavailable due to family circumstances. And so then we have to look at that find new often and sort of start from scratch to to get it done. So, you know, it's it's an ongoing it's an ongoing process and it's not always easy. Um, so so yeah, but that's that's definitely something that, that, uh, that I can talk to them about and have them articulate those things and I can report those back. I think it would be helpful once we are able to solicit comments from the public and take that as mm -hmm direction for the trustees to provide leadership and to facilitate by whatever means the ability to achieve those ends. And I think Allison's point about the direction cannot come entirely from us oh, no. because we don't have the expertise, we don't necessarily interact with the patrons. So that whatever comes from, quote, top down, there also needs to be whatever bubbling. Absolutely. Up. And, and I'll, I'll say champagne bubbles, you know, not swamp bubbles. I'm not trying to advocate that, that responsibility, but I'm saying that as an right. organization, there, there has been a great deal of a sense of mission uh, amongst the trustees, particularly because of the, the circumstances. Um, and I just feel like that the, the, this group has traditionally been a very strong group with um, a lot of ideas. Uh, and so it is helpful to have that as an organization, you know, to have a brain trust that's not just like, well, what are you doing and how are you doing it? But what, you know, what is this group represents the community? What does the community want? You know, and, and we'll try to do it. So, you know, when ideas come through, we try to figure out how, how they can be implemented what we can do. I'm just saying it's a two-way street. Oh, and that's I am agreeing. That's, you know, that's, that's all I'm saying. I agree entirely. I think a website would help let people know what we are doing and yeah. give them ideas about what maybe they could do, but we're working on working it. On. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. Jessica, do you have anything else, or are we at a point of making a recommendation um, well, one of the questions that Maureen and I were talking about is, is part of this process is in terms of making a recommendation for a raise, this is why I was looking at the social security numbers, um, you know, that what we've recommended as a board in the past would be 
like nothing in comparison to inflation. Um, and so I, a point of clarification for me, are we making a recommendation for, um, for uh, a salary increase that is on top of whatever the town cost of living increase is, or that is just the only increase? So that's, that's what I don't quite understand in terms of our charge here. In general, what's happened in the past is we have to sort of assume we don't know what's going to happen on the town front. It might be zero, depending on what the budget looks like, what it might be whatever percent that they decide. Mm -hmm. And that's really like the cost of living adjustment. Mm -hmm. That's like basically. And so what, what we have done is saying, well, what should Patrick's raise be? Like what is his merit raise, mm -hmm. right? Just to use sort of union terms for this, not that we're a union shop, but so we have typically looked at this as this is one part of the potential increase in Patrick's salary with the other increase coming along with the rest of the, right? I mean. Yeah, if, if the town gave a grant of a uh, COLA raise, I yeah. received would be just qualified. like anybody else. It was just like an adjustment to every salary yeah, okay. in town, okay. separate from this consideration. Yeah. So if, for example, we voted to give him a, you know, a 2% increase and then the town voted a two percent cola we don't then rescind our two percent and say okay you got that two percent that's it. it it would then become four okay. percent okay that's helpful because i was concerned if we, if we recommended a two percent raise and then the town said four percent and then it was in place of mm -hmm. so it's in addition to that's I don't think I knew what we gave last year. Do you remember? Right. This is the consistency thing. This is that we were just like, what's well, possible the number? <laughs> I actually can't remember, but I, 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 I'm not going to say it because I can't, I can't remember for sure. I think it was 2%. I should have looked it up. I should have looked it up. I don't know. I want to say it's 2.5. I was still 2.5. Mm -hmm. What is it? Cola. No, I, I thought the question was, is that what the question was? No, we don't have merit Just by my, my yeah. raise yeah. as a contract. I apologize. <laughs> no, that's okay. We were asking that question earlier as well. What was the cola raise last year? Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the answer to a different question that we also have. Thank you. Well, I think the number that we had talked about was 3%, but it was kind of just a stab in the dark. So, yeah, right. Um, because we wanted to recognize the sort of increased like responsibilities and challenges and sort of levels of projects, given that the library is open and bustling and flourishing. Um, our overall satisfaction with performance and um, but again, like any, I, any other comments? Because we don't have the history of what those percentages have been. It, to yeah. me, it just feels random to say to say three percent. But um, I think those raises in, in the past have been any in a range from two to five percent across time. I okay. can tell you what it what it averages up to. That's what it's been, yeah. From low to high. And actually, I think there was a year when I didn't get one because the town was burnt <laughs> or something. I think that was recently. Yes, I, and I think yeah. that was before we had this approach to it. And I think that was one of the things we did realize that if if Patrick just had the same evaluation, etc., then he would his fortunes would rise and fall only with whatever the town decided. Mm -hmm. To do, and we, you know, and we knew that there were some other um, sort of director level positions that had separate contracts, etc. And so that's just like for some history. That's when we said, hey, this is more appropriate because we actually hire Patrick, so the contract is in some ways, you know, with us um, to decide. So 
we kind of wanted to make sure that it didn't happen again. Um, I mean, obviously, we can make any recommendation that we want, and the town could reject it, right? So if I just did the liberty of running numbers ahead of time, so if we uh, if we did went ahead with that proposed increase of youth services coordinator rate to sixteen dollars an hour, um, that would add an additional five hundred twenty three dollars and sixty cents to that hundred and seventy five nine forty and then in addition a three percent raise we'd be adding an additional two thousand sixty two dollars and twenty six cents right so all told you know it's roughly twenty five hundred dollars on top of the 175 right so again we make our recommendations we justify them and then the, in the end the town could still you know reject it and then Patrick would just get whatever coal they increase the town had so would they reject it entirely or would they is that an all or separate line? This is the this is the way that it's been set out. There are those are separate lines. My salary is separate from the staff line, so they, they the town administrator can make any recommendation mm -hmm. on on any of those individual lines and say, you know, this is this line is capped at mm -hmm. you know this number of dollars, and so she she can make her own recommendation relative to that before it goes to the select board of finance. And then, it's gone pretty smoothly. I mean, I we haven't gotten a lot of pushback because, as Patrick pointed out. We generally are pretty conservative with the things that we're asking for, and you know. And I, just, I was that trying to understand if the town administrator said it was beyond the town's ability to pay. Would we then have the opportunity to revisit that within? Some sort of time frame and financial parameters to make an adjustment, or is it no? This is too much. You don't get any of it, or is it the town administrator just to be outrageous? If we said that we wanted to give you a nine percent increase, and the town administrator said that is too much, we can't afford it. It is out of alignment with any and everybody else. Would you then not get any percentage, or would she say everyone else is getting two, well, so you get two? This is this is ultimately, I mean, as it says, this is this would be her recommendation mm -hmm. to the finance committee. So yep. you know, the trustees could also make a, and and probably will be asked to make a justification for mm -hmm. why this number, um, as opposed to some other number, okay. and she will say why she thinks it's it's you okay. Know, it's not right yep. no, no, the fine. trustees will make their own. Correct. She would say something to the effect of, I'm getting pushback on this line item from the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee would be the one that ultimately right. decides. So yes. they may ask us to come. Why is it a 3% increase? This seems like a lot, blah, blah, blah. We were going to recommend 1.5%. No, no, I understand yeah. now. I just that's it. was trying to, well, I have not been happens. privy to that sausage yeah. making before. <laughs> Whether yeah. it was all or not. Right, that's, I didn't understand if there was an opportunity to appeal or any recourse. But you can, I think you could always yeah, have that's fine. I that's understand the town administrator, yep. but because they don't really actually start to review these things until, uh, if I recall, I don't think they really start to actively, you know, review them and have hearings, the finance committee, until right. you know, later in the spring. So, you know, if they're, hopefully they're going to review them quickly and give feedback, and if there needs to be a course correction, they, were, they would be telling us. <laughs> I, I hope I just I don't have a lot of experience, you know, as far as this goes with with Karen and, and her position because she's only been doing it for yeah. a couple of years. So I just this is even now like, things are different than the way they used to be as far as mm -hmm. you know sequence of events. But do you know whether the town is healthy, okay. or you know, like in terms of revenue and? Oh, help! Did you say healthy? He healthy, yeah. I, I I don't know relative to what I, I have not heard people you know saying doom and gloom things as I've heard in some other years so I don't I'm not really sure. I didn't know I've seen like the pot shops, shops like things are fine. Yeah. 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 Well I didn't know if it's hot shops helped uh right. <laughs> There's that the hotel occupancy things yeah. uh the tax. The, yeah. 
the um, evaluations are going out. So I will make a motion to adjust the uh, staff salary line from 175, 940, and 58 cents to 178, 526. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I can I'm... give you this paper. Okay. <laughs> Dot 44. This would reflect the increase of the youth services coordinator position to $16 an hour and uh, a raise of Patrick of 3% which would bring his salary to $70,804.26. Is there any further discussion? None. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please say yes. Because that doesn't see that you raised your hand. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Passes unanimously. Thank you. I'm just going to pass this. Thank you, Patrick. Um, can I just give this to yeah. Jessica? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Did we draft up something? Yes, it, there probably should be a. There probably should see something sent to uh, human resources and, and care and say that the vote was taken. Not that it will be implemented or go into the budget, but just so that they know. Total. This is all um, no. Yes. So on such and such day, uh, the trustees approved. Do I tell them a the three percent raise or? Yeah, I would, I, and I would confirm it with, um, so la last year, um, something that actually just happened a week ago was I got an email from Joan saying that when the calculation for, for the increase for last year went into effect, it was calculated wrong. I don't know by who, but they were, my total salary was like $500 less than what it should have been based on what percentage was voted. And I don't know how that ever happened, but really the HR people should like, I was saying that there should be a note sent to human resources and town administrators, administrators yeah. saying this vote was taken, it's 3%, and then let Joan Figure take the out. number and then do it, and then, you know, because yeah. again, it's going to be, you know, dependent on this all passing and everything else, but she can yeah. take that on board and say this would be the number when the time comes and, and make sure that's I right. called her and I yeah. said, Hey, can you tell me? Oh, that's me? right. Yeah, that's what precipitated it. Yeah, yeah she called me. Can, and I, can you tell yeah. me what the percentage was last last year for Patrick's raise? And you know, I can hear her her calculator. <laughs> and then, and she's like, oh. And she's like, um, that's not right. And uh, so, so. She's like, I'll well, have to go to Human Resource, and I'll give you a call back. Well, when I got the email that afternoon, I had, had like, I read it really quickly because I was like getting up and it popped into the inbox, and I was reading, and I was like, oh no, I was like, I thought I owed the town. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, so, that would be their error. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I played that game with the Social Security. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who won? I had to send them. A, no, I had I paid by credit card. Oh. Oh, so they overpaid you and you had to pay them back? Yes. Oh, God, that's grim. Yes. Yes. So, so I would suggest perhaps that not only include the percentage, but in brackets, what you calculated that percentage dollar amount to be for a total of so they can check the math and we can make sure that everybody is using the same yeah. <coughs> system. Yeah, def definitely check my math because you can see I just scribbled it on the page. I don't imagine I'm going to do the math better than you did. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else Linda, that we need to cover? Then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second.